All right. Uh, so first thing that I came across, um, a fairly short and sweet post, but it does have a PowerShell script in here. Uh, Damien, who we have showcased a thousand times on here because he's always coming up with some really cool solutions, uh, put together a remediation script uh, to add a device to an Enter ID group um, through Intune, uh, which I thought was really cool. I can think of a couple of interesting use cases where um, as soon as the device is checking in, we're relying on the device itself um, and an Azure automation account uh, to go and add it itself essentially to a group rather than relying on uh, the backend mechanisms with something like a dynamic device group, for example. Um, so thank you, Damien, for putting this together. I'm really looking forward to actually trying this out. Um, also came across um, a two-part, so far, I don't know if there's going to be more, but uh, a two-part blog post uh, from our good friend Gary Block uh, has been blogging about the Dell command update uh, solution. Um, so he's been putting uh, some PowerShell functions around Dell command update or DCU. Um, so for those of you that are a Dell shop, um, and want to work with that particular uh, package from Dell, definitely recommend uh, taking a look at what Gary's uh, been writing about over the last week. Um, so there are two different posts I mentioned first. Uh, the first one here is um, basically uh, how to get some of the information about um, Dell PCs under the hood. Um, and then... The second one here is actually installing and managing uh, Dell command update itself uh, through some of these functions that Gary's written. Um, so just fantastic stuff, as always, uh, from Gary. Um, again, there's a lot of my home labs uh, full of some Dell equipment, and uh, a lot of folks that, that Johan and I have been working with uh, have Dell. Um, so definitely looking forward to this as well. And last but not least, something that I, uh, a, a reference that I, I feel like you and I need to add to our, our toolbox here, Johan, uh, we get asked often, as many of us in the community do, about moving to Entra native join. Um, and this is one of those things where I don't want to spoil the entire blog post uh, by any stretch, but it was just fantastic writing. Um, Martin Hemkin put together this post on um, the journey to native Entra join. And uh, I really wanted to call out the very first sentence he put in here because it's a, it's a great statement to make going through this. If you think you need a domain joined device to access a file share after this blog, I did something wrong. Um, so fantastic writing here, Martin. Thank you for putting this together. You can see some of the things that he does go through here. Um, uh, these are the most common things that we're seeing, right? When you're going to a native uh, entry join or common concern, how do I connect to the network? How do I deal with my applications? How do I deal with group policies, file shares, that sort of thing? Um, so obviously I was very excited to come across this blog post as well. Um, but yeah, those are the uh, few things that I came across over the last week. Uh, but it, it's a timely, timely topic. Uh, practically every other session or, or even discussion uh, last week at the MMS conference it was related to, okay, different ways to, to migrate off or coexist even an on-premises environment together with uh, another identity, in this case, Entra, and moving policies and moving applications and moving software updates. And, okay, it's for us, what is right, what is wrong? Uh, how can we do this? So that was uh, it's great to see the interest of doing it. And I'm so happy that organizations are actually taking their time researching, that, researching this, investing in this, instead for just full-blown 100, uh, like 100 kilometers an hour, speed ahead without any sort of afterthought. So it, it's good to see that people are taking their time to do research what's available, how it works and how they can move forward, what makes sense for them. 
because there is no such thing as a single scenario that matches every single company on the planet. It just it's one of those lovely. It depends. For oh, some yes. organizations, it's like, all right, you should definitely go forward moving this. For you guys, wait a minute, take a step back even, and then, then go forward again. Exactly. Well said. Couldn't agree more. All right. So uh, I only have one thing, but this is something that we, we mentioned last week, and I've been so excited about this. Uh, in fact, so excited, so I tried it out even before it was uh, really ready. But uh, it is connected cash uh, that I'm talking about. So I'm going to head and share my screen. Uh, earlier today, Microsoft uh, lighted up uh, some of the new connected cash functionality in Azure. So it's a standalone connected cash server. Uh, for it, it pre education and enterprise. Uh, we mentioned, I believe, last week that there were some discussions on MMS uh, regarding this because we have both Andy Rivas and Carmen with us at the conference. They had a session on this, and during that session, they announced that this is going to be available today. So uh, fair enough. Today, it did show up in my Azure portal. And of course, I, I fairly quickly created a resource group and I started to play around with, OK, what can I do with, with connected cache here? So I created myself a connected cache, and I started to connect a few cache nodes that I have. Uh, it does support Windows Server, Windows Client, and Linux to host this cache content. I decided to pick two Windows 11 devices to run this. Uh, right now, <laughs> I, I cannot provision them, because that part is still being published. I got a confirmation from Andy like half an hour ago, like, sit tight sir we are publishing this as we speak i'm like okay then but i wanted to do this now but i, I have to wait a few hours I, I can live with that but basically you will have your machines in here and you will download the provisioning package and you will provision them so they will show up as cached servers or cached content uh technically behind the scenes and we will share these links with you uh the connected cash for this particular scenario enterprise and education there is no dependency or config manager whatsoever it's a container running on top of either windows or linux so in windows of course it is and this is the keyword here it's a docker compatible container. Whoops, I did not mean to do that. The keyword is compatible. It does not require a Docker license. There were some people that were concerned about that early on. It's like, all right, but we are actually a large company. We have more than 250 clients. And then we need a Docker license. But no, you do not. This is a free container, free to use, uh, all that good stuff. So um, Really like, nice to see that. So hopefully we'll be able to give you more insight uh, well, next Wednesday. But I, I, I just want to show you guys this. I was, I was so excited to see this showing up um, in the environment. So very, very cool. Well, you've only waited a uh, few years for it. So it's close very exciting. To, close to four years. Wow. Um, Tukpunt that I work for, uh, also work for, I have multiple homes, uh, been part of the private preview for, for many, many years. So yeah. it's so nice to see this come home. Yeah, it's exciting stuff. 